What's up Scrollgers, it's Nerf here, and today we are going to spectate a ranked match between PewQ and Smelkior. Smelkior. So, uh, I'll show you guys, all know PewQ, uh, widely regarded as one of the best Scrolls players ever. When he's playing ranked, he's always near the top. Uh, when he enters a tournament, he usually wins it. Um, and Smelkior is a pretty high ranked player uh, himself. Both players right now are above 1700. PewQ is actually right on my tail uh, for number one on the ladder. So I'm trying to hold on to number one right now. And um, we see PewQ is playing Mono Decay, which a lot of people right now are complaining about saying that the Bloodline Taint nerf really was a huge nerf for Decay, and Decay is not good right now. And um, I probably agree with that because I don't see much Decay on the ladder, but. PewQ has shown his skill once again and taken a Mono Decay deck up to number two in the ladder right behind me. So bravo to him, but he can do that with any kind of deck you throw at him because he is an amazing player. And we'll see how Smelkior stands up to PewQ's Mono Decay deck. This is not a cursed deck that was really like nerfed to oblivion with the Bloodline Saint uh, nerf, and um, this is not really an undead deck. This is just a normal. Mono Decay deck with like Halls of Omasa and just like Watchergeddon type stuff, a lot of creatures. Kind of old, old school Decay, I used to play a lot of this kind of Decay. And uh, I'm not sure what Smelky was playing, I believe he was playing Decay before, so he might be playing that again. So this is good, interesting. A non-Decay meta and a maybe a Decay mirror match at the high ranks. PewQ is rocking the um, pre-launch uh, high ranked avatar head. Um, and looking at his starting hand, he has three drops and an infectious play damage curse. Probably not the best starting hand because Harvester is not really an early game creature, um, and damage curse is not really an early game thing either. Uh, infectious blight and soul Serum are nice. And here the game started. I mean, if he's playing against growth, he probably want to keep that soul Serum. He doesn't know that, but he is going first. Uh, but he does keep the starting hand, and he gets rid of the early witch doctor and Smelkior is playing some kind of variant of Decay. So far it looks pretty amount of Decay because he has the humans with the Witch Doctor, notably the Flesh Animator, which um, helps count down guys like the Harvesters and the Husks from the Witch Doctor. And there's a second Infectious Blight. So PewQ uh, sacrifices the Damage Curse, decides to keep both Blights. He wants to keep those Blights going around. Unfortunately, Smoky or he top decks the Ripper now. He would have liked that on turn one. So he'll just sacrifice it now that it's turn two and play the Illinois Tribesman, hoping that PewQ is going to play something he can soul steal this turn. But we see PewQ's hand, and he top decks a Rot Eater, so that's good for him. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'd rather have a turn three Rot Eater than a Harvester. You could argue that Harvester is maybe a better creature, but Harvester does not really do much when it's like one of the only things on the board because it doesn't count down normally. So he will play his tier three Rot Eater somewhere on the board, uh, most likely. And he gets rid of the Soul Steel, seeing that there's not a high chance of Smoky Yard playing a two health or less creature now that it's going to be turn three. And he is not worried about challenging right in the middle row because the Rot Eater does have a lower countdown than the Illinois Tribesman because uh, Tribesman had three countdowns, so the Rot Eater will be able to attack first. Now Smoky Yard Top takes a Halls of Momlasa, so he can get that if he can get that out running before PewQ, that'd be good for him. And he has a Languid this turn. Um, Maybe he should have languid it before he sacrificed so he could have a bigger choice to sacrifice. Not a huge deal though. And PewQ has a choice here. He could harvester out, he can get an infectious blight going, and he has four pretty good scrolls in hand, so he's going to have to uh, pitch one of them. I'm sure for resources. And uh, he, this Rod Eater is not going to be doing too much damage. He gets rid of the Wish Doctor, and he plays an infectious blight. And now Smelkior. Uh, we'll likely play the Flesh Animator this turn, because he can't Soul Steal anything or really do much else. Probably get rid of the Early Watcher, I suspect. And, um, let's see, yeah, he does so, and he puts the Flesh Animator behind that Tribesman. And now PewQ has a Languid of his own. He might want to play it and then sacrifice something and then play the Harvester. That could be an option. Unfortunately for, uh, so he does Languid there. This guy is going to die from the poison, um, so it's not a huge languid, but it does protect him from two damage from one attack. 
and he plays the Harvester behind that Rot Eater. And that Tribesman will die in a turn after this one. And there, Smelkior top decks a Damaker, so that was pretty good for him. He's going to be able to get rid of the Infectious Blight, because Damaker deals 1 damage to all his units. So that will kill this Tribesman, which is pretty perfect. He top decked that Damaker, because he gets rid of the Infectious Blight. He'll likely get rid of uh, Pukyu's Harvester, I think, because the Rot Eater is kind of languided. And, um... Yeah, that was, that was a very good uh, turn for Sakyo, and he was able to top deck that when he didn't have another turn, another play that turn. And now PUQ, unfortunately, the Damage did not put Flesh Animator into 2 health, so he can't really soul steal anything. He does top deck a Curse Monger, so he could play that, um, maybe behind the Rot Eater or something, or in front of it. Um, or he could languid that uh, Flesh Animator, I think he yeah, just plays the Curse Monger. His few languids, he's not guaranteed to get anything else he can play this turn. And he protects the Rot Eater because the Rot Eater is the thing that's attacking. And now Smelkier is likely going to sacrifice the Life Stealer and play one of the Sick Drops. Um, it'll be interesting to see which Doctor or Hall's Home Lhasa. He could get uh, the Halls started and slowly get more resource and scroll advantage over PewQ. Or he can play the Witch Doctor, which uh, might be the safer play. Because if he plays Halls, he'll probably have to try to work his way back into it. And he just plays the Witch Doctor, which means um, that all the humans around the Witch Doctor will turn into a Hus, which is hard to break in for PewQ. And uh, there's a Languid and a Lifestealer. I think life, uh, PewQ's wanna, gonna wanna keep the Lifestealer. He might actually sacrifice a Languid. You don't really see people sacrifice Languids too often because they just are mo they just draw, draw a scroll right after, but he likes his other two scrolls like Infectious Plate and Lifestealer. And now he's able to play Life Steel and he top decks a Witch Doctor, which he can play next turn. That's really perfect. He'll have a strong four creatures on the board when he gets the Witch Doctor out next turn. And um, Smilkier, I guess this turn he's probably just going to get the Halls out. He has a Necrogen if he needs to. He might actually want to get the Blight Barrier out because then next turn if he Necrogens he can poison stuff as well. Um, it's definitely an option for him to go with. But he just goes with the Halls this turn. And he is kind of giving up his flesh animator for this curse monger to destroy but a husk will spawn and pukyu has a necrogen of his own um it looks like pukyu is probably just going to sacrifice uh i would sacrifice the watcher he might not though cons oh he actually just curses the witch doctor because he has the infectious blight in hand the infectious blight is going to kill the witch doctor in two turns but he decides to take out the flesh animator wisely because that thing has one health so that's going to have a 100% chance to jump onto the Witch Doctor right after. And he does play the Watcher in front just to save this Life Stealer from dying if uh, if Smelkier had like a Brain Lice or an Infectious Blight or some kind of curse on this guy. Uh, Smelkier uses the Halls on Malasa to take a Life Stealer. And uh, so PewQ uh, gave up a Watcher or a Curse Monger. Um, in order to have a higher chance of this life stealer surviving, and uh, Smelkier will have to decide what he wants to attack and what he wants to play. So he gets rid of the was that life stealer, maybe, and he could necrogun in this turn. I don't think this is a necrogun turn though. Looks like he went up to seven so he could play the blight bear and the harvester. Um. Not sure if he wants to play the Blight Bear in front of the Witch Doctor, although it's human. It will poison his row, and the Witch Doctor already has Curse too, so that might not be the plan he wants to go with. He will definitely try to use this Husk as a blocker because he wants to bait PewQ into actually destroying this Husk with combat damage, so um, PewQ would get rid of his own Infectious Blight. And let's see how he positions strategically. We'll see if he wants to kill the 4 health watcher, which would be harder to, for Piku to kill later on, or the curse monger, which will just deal more damage in the short term. Um, it looks like he does want to take out the curse monger, and he plays the Bear in that row, but that's fine because he has this thing to protect everything, so he'll likely not get poisoned. And now Piku gets his own Halls of Almasa. So I'm sure he didn't really want to top deck that right now, so he actually sacrifices it because he'd rather have a Witch Doctor. And. Now, he just plays the Witch Doctor and does not attack, attack that husk because he doesn't want to get rid of the Infectious Blight. And now Smelkier has the Halls of Ohm Loss that PQ does not have, so he's getting a slow advantage every other every turn. And he gets the Damage Curse, Spectate Bug right here. This Damage Curse really costs 5 because he already played it once, 
and it was a very good early on damage curse which gave him which got rid of the early infectious blight from pq but yeah so this costs five and this turn he could go with like a, a necrogeddon and actually deal a lot of damage but considering he has a strong board presence yeah he's just sacrifices and he has all three damage curses in hand so he probably is going to damage curse this turn because again it would actually take out the this infectious blight so he does do it, he takes out the Witch Doctor. This is actually a strong Rot Eater. Um, it was languided, but it's still pretty strong because it's been around ever since turn three. But another good damage curse takes out another Infectious Blight from PewQ. So PewQ's Infectious Blights are just are just dropping like fry, flies from the damage curses. So Smelt Gear is getting excellent value from the damage curses. And he has the Halls of Omasa still. Um, and now PewQ gets uh, another Halls of Omasa. He Probably is running two or three in the deck, so. And now, without the Witch Doctor on the board, the Loyal Darkling might not be as valuable right now. It's not really a race to the Edels right now. It's really, they're trying to uh, maintain the board presence. And is looking down, two units from Smelky are about to attack, but he does have a Watcher as protection as it stands, which Decay has a problem dealing with. So he does have decent protection and two pretty strong creatures. He decides to go for resources and play the Halls of Omasa. So he didn't need to go to resources there to play the halls, but since he's going to be drawing a Sorrel every turn, he wants to make sure he ramps ahead of time. And Smelkior has his last turn of Halls of Omasa, and he takes the Necrogeddon from that bunch, which it looks like, I mean, he could Necrogeddon this turn. I don't know if it's the right play anymore. So that Dam Curse costs six. He gets rid of one of them. And uh, he has an option. He could play the Oblivion Seeker um, just for another human in front of the Witch Doctor, which he does. So he doesn't get full advantage of his resources. But he plays a uh, nice creature nonetheless. So he moves the Witch Doctor up and takes out the Watcher and puts it next to the Oblivion Seeker. It's going to be interesting if he wants to move the Blight Bearer back to deal some extra damage on this life stealer, He might not, considering PewQ could very well have a soul steal and be able to poison this whole row, so he does not do that. And now, but he, now if he moves the Harvester down, which he does not, um, he doesn't want the Harvester to get a poison. The Harvester is at two countdown, so it may have been good for Ms. Monkey to be aggressive with that Harvester, but he decides to stay at the top and not want to get poisoned uh, by his own Blight Bearer. Um, PewQ takes back one of his infectious Blights that Smokey destroyed with his damage Curses. And he's a cursed presence. So PQ is does have like a more mono decay build, not really cursed decay with no bloodline taints and stuff, but he does have the cursed presence. Um, which means he'll be able to he actually just goes through the infectious blight and the curse swinger this turn. I was thinking he might play the infectious blight with the cursed presence to quickly take out the harvester or something like that. But he wants to get both things out this turn and he and he does not feel bad to just go straight into resources because he knows he's gonna draw a scroll from the halls of Omlasa. So he's actually trying to stay ahead of Smelky or in resources. And he has three very strong creatures on the board. And this thing is going to die from the... The Witch Doctor is going to die this coming turn. And now, does he play the Damage Curse and destroy the, the Infectious Blight again? I can see that. And then this Harvester would attack because two units would die. The thing he Damage Curses and the um, Infectious Blight, dude. He might do that. Or he might go with a Necrogen because he get rid of the Blight and he draws scrolls from the Oblivion Seeker. And I'm, I kind of want to see another Damning Curse to kill the Infectious Blight. Let's see. Right, I, actually, I don't think he's enough resources to play it. Nah, he doesn't. Okay, well, he's just going to let his Witch Doctor die to the poison then. And PewQ top decks. I mean, from the puzzle moments, he could take a Curse Presence, uh, Watcher, or Witch Doctor. I think he's going to take the Witch Doctor or the Curse Presence. It's going to be interesting what he chooses. He takes the cur Curse Presence so he can quickly take out Poisoned Things. And now he has some strong creatures he has to take out, like the Harvesters. It's going to be kind of tough for him to do that. And uh, so maybe it was maybe it would have been wise for Smoky or to Damage Curse to like the Rod Eater last turn. And uh, will PewQ play empty his hand again? He does not completely empty his hand, does not play the last Darkling. Wants something to sacrifice, but he will be drawing a scroll from the Halls of Omasa, so he'll have a couple of choices what to sacrifice. And now Smelkior is in an interesting spot. 
It looks like over these past few turns, ever since Piku got the Halls of Omlasa out, he's been able to creep ahead of in board control. Um, and having I'm not being aggressive with this Harvester before kind of hurt him because now this Harvester, although it has one counter, it's really not it's not threatening PQ at all. So he sacrifices for scrolls. And uh, Spunky does have scroll advantage over PQ, and they have the same amount of resources. That's something to note. Of. PQ has one more turn of Halls of Omlasa. We haven't seen either player run any Rattle Hymns, so we won't see any of those shenanigans. We could see a Damage Curse this turn, which would mean this Blight Bearer would, would, uh, would kill itself when it attacks. The I think the Infectious Blight would sur would survive though, because the Blight Bearer would still die of poison damage. But it, the Blight Bearer would still poison in this row. So we'll see if he wants to do that. Maybe take out Pukyu's Harvester. He takes out Pukyu's um, Giant Rod Eater. And he takes out an Idol with his Harvester that attacks. And now Pukyu, with his last Halls of Omelasa, is actually going to be able to take another Halls of Omelasa. We'll see if he wants to do that. And he does. So... It's actually really nice to play Halls of Omasa on your last turn of Halls of Omasa because you're actually getting one free turn of Halls. Because this last turn of the one captain, he wouldn't actually get it if he didn't play, if he doesn't play the Halls this turn. And he top decks um, Soul Steel and Trisman, uh, so he's gonna be able to get the Halls out to keep it going and play the Elmira Trisman this turn or the Darkling if he wants, and have a uh, so he decides to curse to get rid of the Harvester, keep the Blight going. And if the Blight doesn't jump to this Harvester, you could always just Soul Steal it next turn. So Pukyu has pushed himself into a very good, very good spot after a kind of rough beginning. And he decides to use his Life Steal to get uh, more damage than just dealing damage to a 2 health Idol Beast. He knows the Darkling can finish it off. And uh, now Smelkior might want to get a Necrogeddon off soon because he really lost his board presence and he just has Infectious Blight and Oblivion Seeker on the board. But he can't really, and this might be a good time to open up because there's not really a Witch Doctor on the field to stop to stop it, but he's not going to be able to get rid of that Harvester that's going to attack or the Strong Life Stealer. So this is kind of tough for him. Um, and PQ has actually dealt nice damage to the idols already. So... He might try to go for more resources, play a couple creatures, and then try to uh, pull off a Necrogut and play the following turn. We'll have to see. He goes for resources up to 9, so is he going to do what I said and play both creatures? Both Cursemonger and the Blaven Seeker. And he... Or is he going to play the other Brain Lice? He plays both. So, but still, even if he has a big Necrogun this, that, this next turn, guys like the Life Stealer and the Harvester have more than three health, so one husk will not be enough to kill them. So if PQ wants, he can make sure those guys survive. And now PQ gets another Halls. I'm not sure if he'll take it this time. I think he might just want a creature now because he has the Halls for another few turns, and these are the big deciding turns of the game coming up. Or PQ probably already, like, more or less decided the game. Um... Smoky is climbing an uphill battle now. So, PQ might take advantage of rel the Relentless of the Harvester to move it up and take out the Attacking Oblivion Seeker and hit the Idol. I think PQ might be fearing a Necrogeddon, seeing as the Blake would go away and the Oblivion Seekers would die, so a lot of scrolls from Smoky War. So, he might actually try to take out the Oblivion Seeker. He uh, gets an Oblivion Seeker of his own. He can. He can fill the board with some creatures, like a strong creature, like a life stealer and a tribesman, and it would be very hard for a smoke to break in there with a Necrogeddon. If PQ stays away, a Necrogeddon from Smelky could actually come close to winning the game, so PQ has to be wary of that. So he languids the, the Oblivion Seeker. He's going to take out the bottom idol, so he's not going to give Smelky or any card draw by killing any of the Oblivion Seekers. He's going to stay away from that and play an Oblivion Seeker, and he does protect the middle idol smartly uh, so that Smelky Orc can't really quickly finish the game. He has Darkling too. I'm tempted if I'm a Smelky Orc to actually play... Wait. That turn he actually could have Ripper Darkling Necrode. 
and he would have enough damage to take out the middle idol and leave the top idol at one health so you just need another darkling to win but it would put it would make puku's harvester go off and i think puku would almost have lethal so uh, that'd be a very risky play he decided not to that he sacrificed for scrolls yeah he would have been able to play a darkling here necrogeddon okay you can start making it so uh yeah the darkling would take this down to six and then one husk there destroyed the Oblivion Seeker, and then two to take out the idol, and then three on the top would have done that. So he plays the Darkling, and he could still Necrogeddon. Um, is he going to? He can take out... He... If he sacrificed for resources, he could have played the Ripper and the Necrogeddon, which means he would have been able to take out this Harvester. So, and he drew a Watcher, which means... He can win this game soon. He's not actually worried about this Harvester, though. Because it's just the, the max damage you can do is hit this idol. But now both players are very close to winning the game. Again, if Smokey were played that turn a little differently, he could have gotten this idol to one health. And now PQ does not have another Darkling. PQ is also is just one darkling away from winning so you just have to sacrifice darkling in this row the harvester is going to destroy this idol this turn and uh if he had more soul steals he can also be able to sneak out a win so now pq's hoping that smell cure does not have another necro get in he's i think he's PQ's in a good spot though because he's he has the resources to play stuff in front of this top idol in case smell cure has another necro get in and he gets a nice uh, Meyer Shambler spawn, so he's able to move that up to protect, and he could play a Tribesman also. And the Brain Lice will take out this Cusk. So a very strong turn by PUQ, countering Smelkyware's big Knuckle Gun play by leaving him with only a single Husk. And now, he's kind of dead. I think he has to try to hope for to fill up the board and go with another wat Watcher Gun to break through to the Idols. That's really his only shot now. He's playing scrolls before he sacrifices. Interesting. You see, if he did what I, I said he could have done last turn and sacrifice a resource to play the Ripper too, and this idol will be at one health, he would at least have a shot at winning because he would get a watcher down. He could always just soul steal one of his creatures and have a one in third chance of winning this match right now. So he plays a couple of creatures, likely uh, yeah, the Harvester and the Ripper. So if PQ does some kind of big Necro get in, that means at least his harvest will probably go off. And interesting, he protects the top idol, even though, I guess in case he has like a Darkling Necro. But if he had Darkling Necro, he'd be able to win anyways from the middle idol from two Darklings on it. So, uh, a little strange, he didn't want to protect the Harvester, but there is a Necrogeddon for PUQ, and that is not quite enough to win. Um, we'll have to see if PUQ sacrifices a scroll. If he draws a Watcher, he would uh, most definitely win, or a Darkling, and he would win. And he actually just goes for resources, and uh, or actually, is it game if he plays Cursed Presence on this Harvester and Necros? No, it wouldn't be game. What am I saying? Okay, so he just gets more harvest on the board to make it even harder for Smelky or to possibly come back. And now I guess Smelky is just hoping he can draw a Necrogeddon and get really lucky. No Necrogeddon this turn. If he had a Necrogeddon, he would definitely have a chance to win. They would just have to hit a couple of the same idol. Um, the Watcher. The Watcher pings. So now, he plays Languid to mitigate. Ooh, there's a Necrogeddon, but he's going to need to do use that with the Watcher. He's going to have to do that with the Watcher. Um, he could do it right now and just clear a bunch of stuff, but no, because then the Harvesters would attack, it would just be bad news. So yeah, he just he's going to play probably the Blight Bearer this turn and just try to survive this turn. He's just hoping PQ's not going to get a... Uh, Darkling and a Necrogeddon to win. He 
He's going to really, really hope that he can survive this coming turn because then he'll have a chance to win next turn. So now let's see what PQ draws. Very close to K vs. K match. K vs. K mirror matches are, are always some of the best matches in scrolls. So intense, so many factors. Just the Harvester mind games are always awesome. So, yeah, this is the kind of decay decks I used to play, and they got pretty intense. So, PQ, interesting what I'll choose here. Um, it's really kind of a race now to see who gets their win con first, though. So, I'm not sure if whatever it chooses here will make much of a difference. Because he already has the creatures to protect his idols anyways, I guess. Probably take... I don't know. PQ is taking some time deciding, though, so... We'll see what he does. I'm not sure how many Darklings are left in his deck cycle. He only has 12 scrolls left in the deck cycle. So if he has any a couple Darklings in there, then he's probably going to be able to draw them through. Oh, wait, I'm, this is like glitched out. Is that glitched out? Come on, don't be glitched out. This is an awesome match. Did he already choose the scroll? He just soul stole something. All right, I'm going to be really fast and leave and come back. Hopefully I don't miss much. Quick, 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 quick. Alright, good. And it's still PQ's turn. Alright, so I think the sifting kind of messed up a little bit. Yeah, sifting and spectate is a little weird. So, he didn't sacrifice for scrolls or resources yet. I wonder what he's doing. He ran out of t Did he run out of time? If he did, that kind of sucks. And now, Smelgear is going to have a, have a chance to win. He's not going to be able to hit any idols. And he's a double Necrogeddon. And a Darkling. Well... I mean, he's gonna. It doesn't really matter double Necrogen because if he Necrogen's here and he doesn't win, he likely loses. Well, actually, if he puts the Necrogen, if he puts the Watcher on this row, this idol will actually probably have enough enough health to survive one of the Harvesters crashing down onto it. So uh, let's see what happens. Here comes the Watcher Necro. Just enough resources to play. And next turn, you can play the Darkling Necro if he survives this coming turn from PewQ. But if PewQ has like a couple Soul Steals or a Damage Curse and a Soul Steal. Then this harvest is gonna be able to take down that idol, and not that that was pretty bad for Smelkier. It did two damage to both of these idols. If he just had two more ticks in this idol, he would have won. That was pretty unlucky for Smelkier, I, I believe. So now he's not gonna be able to take out uh, that harvester. He has to keep the units on this row. He has to because PQ wins if he takes out two of these husks. Because then the harvester would have enough damage to get to that idol. If PQ cannot win on this turn, it's fairly certain that Smelkier is going to be able to win on the next turn because he has a Darkling Necro. So let's see what happens. Up, well, a Watcher Damning Curse would probably win. He has a Watcher Gun of his own, so he'd probably win right now. Yeah, I think PQ is going to be able to get the win here. A Watcher right there, and a Damage Curse is going to take out both these creatures, and he just needs one hit in the idol, and he gets it. PewQ, oh no, he actually didn't Damage Curse, he actually never got I thought he Damage Curse. So, either way, he won a very close, awesome match between Smelkior and PewQ. Here is the match stats for you guys, and let's see if PewQ inched towards my number one spot. I'm sure he did, he's close, he's close guys. <laughs> so that'll be it for today. Thank you all for watching. Like the video, enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this. And that was an awesome match. I'll see you guys tomorrow.